Welcome to the season finale of Death Arena. Today, we have a battle between two biological living weapons, Robocop and Nemesis. Before we get to the battle, I need to let you know that I won't be revealing the next fight after this. But don't worry, the next season of the show will start soon. Now, let's introduce Death Arena's next round of fighters. Alex J. Murphy was a good police officer with a good family, as with many good cops, that all changed when he was transferred to Detroit, Michigan. What began as a routine patrol through the city became the most important moment of Murphy's life, his death. Murphy would have been six feet under if the megacorporation Omni Consumer Products had not stepped in. By privatizing Detroit's police force, OCP technically owned Murphy's corpse. With unchecked crime on the rise, OCP's, a, uh, forward-thinking executive, Bob Morton proposed a bailout plan so ridiculously absurd, it just might work. They would rebuild Murphy. Better, stronger, with less flexibility, which of course, means robo-parts. The result was one bad motherfucker, Robocop. With the durability of a tank, and the firepower of a one-man army, Robocop nearly annihilated all of Detroit's street crime in just a couple of days. The man was unstoppable. Robocop is 99% artificial, but he relies on the most complicated known machinery, a human brain. Even after OCP tried to make him their own personal robo-pet, the man called Murphy still lived. With no family, a contorted public image, and the constant threat of deactivation by his corporate owners, the struggle to regain his humanity would consume Murphy's every waking moment. While also fighting crime, and that's just his good days. Fortunately, his cutting-edge arsenal makes locking up the bad guys the easiest part. Housed in his nifty right leg is the custom Auto 9 machine pistol, one of the most powerful hand cannons ever made. In his left leg, he's got several tactical ordnance grenades, each with adjustable power levels. At level 3, a single ordnance can annihilate a metal security door. So just imagine what maximum level 10 can do. If he needs a bit more firepower, Murphy has an attachable weapon arm, complete with machine gun, flamethrower, and anti-tank smart bomb missile, and for those extra special moments, there's the Cobra assault cannon, which goes boom, and then there's no more anything. He also has a subsonic jetpack, which helps him jump sharks. Murphy is also equipped with state-of-the-art hardware and software, including a thermograph a video recorder and a terminal strip for collecting data. Or for ripping out throats. No wonder Detroit's falling apart. All their USB flash drives can double as shives. Murphy's armor is made up of carboceramic reinforced titanium, with laminated Kevlar, which basically means it'll stop pretty much anything. It's like the Pepperidge Farm bread packaging of armor. Each leg has two ram bolts which can anchor him into the ground to stop fleeing motorboats and speeding cars. He also has a targeting system so precise, he can catch and even shoot bullets out of thin air. Murphy has defeated plenty of technically superior combat machines, and endured dozens of seemingly fatal situations. He's strong enough to lift a 10-ton armored door, tough enough to survive a bazooka, brave enough to plunge into a giant nuclear plant monster thing and kill it from inside its stomach. Murphy may be a walking tank, but he also moves like one. He's so slow. His main fun sheen is to chase the bad guys. You'd think OCP would have prioritized running legs over, say, his frisbee skills. Also, Murphy's battery can only last about 24 hours without recharging, but consistent damage can quickly drain his power. Overall, Robocop is a cyborg with tank-like capabilities. He is nearly unstoppable and has an overwhelming arsenal, but his options are limited and he moves very slowly. Umbrella Corporation let's just say, has made a handful of apocalyptic mistakes. And one of the most infamous, was the biologically engineered killing machine nemesis T-Type. He was created by Umbrella Corporation with only one sinister goal, kill the SDARS team. And so he set off on his journey to go do so. Nemesis has properties of the T-Virus, which allows him superhuman strength, endurance, and stamina. 
Turns out Umbrella really doesn't like people who kill their greatest creations and then try to expose them for being comically evil so they gave Trenchcoat 2 a rocket launcher and told it to get hunting. Unfortunately it only killed the pilot of the group before running into Jill Valentine and then several mercenaries who wore down its considerable endurance until it couldn't heal anymore. At least Jay Leno didn't do it in. Nemesis rocket launcher is a pretty impressive ranged weapon that can not only fire repeatedly but also shoot down helicopters, decimate zombie bodies, and even be used as a club, although it can be destroyed by gunfire. It's also got a single tentacle in its first form that can be used to stab people through the mouth or extended further like a spear and the second form has several for whipping and grabbing purposes. It's pretty much what would happen if you decided to mix Chris Walker's DNA with Slender Man. Like its predecessor, it knows some decent combat moves including punches while walking or running, throwing people, and yanking their legs out from under them in a second form. Even its clothes are decent protection as the coat it wears helps reduce the damage done to its body by firearms and explosives although it can be destroyed with enough damage. T-Type has a healing factor that enables it to get up after every large explosion and barrage of gunshots after Ray Wyland it can mutate to get to another form if it can't heal the current damage. Probably its most deadly weapon is the fact that it can infect victims with the T-Virus by stabbing them with a tentacle which can not only turn humans into zombies but animals as well. Nemesis is just as strong as other tyrants able to smash through the roof of a train or wall with little difficulty along with being able to easily lift human targets with a single hand or multiple tentacles. It's fond of throwing people around or just slamming them into the ground which actually has lethal potential if done a couple times along with punches being enough to kill zombies in two hits. It's not slow either, running fast if it wants to dodging grenade launcher shots from close range, and even leaping over the fence for the police station along with using its tentacles to pull it onto a wooden bridge in its second form. Remember those large explosions mentioned earlier? Those include two kitchen gas tanks exploding, one that was powerful enough to knock two people out a window, and a grenade explosion that blew up most of a train but the first two only keep it down for a while. T-Type doesn't even need its head like the previous tyrants and was perfectly content to try killing Jill without an arm as well before eating a tyrant body to turn into a giant acid spitting monster with tentacles and back spikes that took two railgun shots to cripple. And a revolver magazine if she decided to kill the thing for tracking her throughout most of Raccoon City which required it to figure out various ways to reach her including busting through the window of the police station after the front door is held. He fought Jill Valentine and Carlos Oliveira who both had experience fighting Umbrella's creations before and killed the SDARS pilot and forced another mercenary to sacrifice himself to injure it. Its most notable weakness is that it can only take so much damage before having to lie down and heal but seems to know when to mutate as it laid down and fired to get to the second form and ate a tyrant body to get to the third form. Like its foe. It seemingly can't swim either and prefers to walk at targets unless angered or they get too far away along with being able to be shocked by electricity or blinded by spotlights. Nemesis T-Type certainly deserves its spot as one of horror gaming's first and finest antagonists. Overall, Nemesis is one of the deadliest creations in the Resident Evil series. He can move over 10 tons, but enough damage can make him immobile.
Fatality. Wow, this a really close one. Nemesis may be slightly stronger, but Robocop's better survivability gave him the leg up he needed. Robocop fell from the top of a skyscraper onto a gas tank which then exploded, pushed the building busting bomb into a warehouse, that solid brick by the way, which detonated in his face, and he was fine. Robocop stopped and reversed a 3,000 pounds per square inch hydraulic press with his bare hands. And being part human means that Murphy can think more creatively, adding a level of unpredictability the nemesis could not immediately understand. Plus, while Nemesis is busy trying to heal his wounds, Robocop could scan for weaknesses and finish him off. It looks like Nemesis is dead meat. The winner is Robocop. Murphy.